Rico Live Switcher and Rico Live Multicam are really easy to use. You don't need much experience to get good results. However, in this video, we'll share some tips and ideas to help you improve the video quality so you can create professional content. Once you've connected cameras to Rico Live Switcher or Rico Live Multicam, you can tap on one of them to queue it in the video preview pane. Notice the AF button towards the top right of this section. This is the autofocus button. By default, the cameras will automatically refocus if the subject moves position. This can often be undesirable, especially if the scene is stationary. To avoid unwanted or unnecessary focusing, tap the AF button to disable it. This can be controlled from the iPhone as well. The status is synchronized between the camera device and the iPad. Now we're in manual focusing mode. We can tap on an object in the preview window to focus on it. Another option is to only disable autofocusing while the camera is live. This allows you to take advantage of autofocusing while ensuring that the focus adjustment will never be visible to the audience. When the camera is no longer live, autofocusing will be performed again. To do this, open the camera control menu while the camera is selected and visible in the preview pane. This is where you'll find the disable autofocus when live switch. The settings chosen in this menu will apply to the camera currently shown in the preview pane only. If you wish to disable autofocusing when live for all cameras, you must switch it on or off for each camera independently. This menu can also be accessed from an iPhone by pressing and holding on the video preview area. To dismiss the menu, place your finger on it and swipe towards the bottom. You can also switch focusing mode here too, as well as choose how exposure and white balance should be managed. Exposure refers to how much light enters the lens and affects how bright or dark the video is. By default, exposure will be managed automatically. For example, if you go outside, the image will get darker so that it's not overexposed. This can be changed to manual so that it's adjusted when you tap on an object in the preview pane. Alternatively, you can lock the exposure to allow you to focus, for example, by tapping without changing the exposure. The same applies to white balance, which refers to the colour of the video and how accurate it is. It's important to have consistent colours among several cameras. Try filming the same thing on all the cameras, setting the white balance and then locking it for the remainder of the production. Also in the camera control menu is an image stabilisation option. This is not recommended when broadcasting with Ricoh Live Switcher because of the delay that it causes, but recordings from Ricoh Live Multicam will be unaffected despite any noticeable delay in the preview. Finally, in the camera control menu is a slider to control the light on an iPhone, along with a tally option. A tally light is a signal light to tell those in front of the camera that the camera is live. You could make use of this feature by reducing the brightness and perhaps putting a red sticker over the LED. Next, let's move one tab to the left and take a look at effects. In the first section, the transition can be changed. You can select between cut, cross dissolve, wipe, cube and twist. A cut is the most basic but often most professional transition. Next is the cross dissolve. Video sources will fade into each other. If you tap the I button next to a transition name, you'll find settings for it. The duration of the cross dissolve can be chosen here. The next transition is a wipe. Again, the duration can be set along with the direction of the wipe. Next is cube, where the duration can be set. And finally, twist, where again, the duration is configurable. The next section has the multi-view effects. When you select two or more video sources, you can choose from a variety of multi-view effects to show them all at the same time. The first one is dashboard. This supports two, three, or even four video sources. As with the transitions, pressing the I button will give you access to the settings for each multi-view effect. The duration of the transitions in and out of the effect can be set. And with the dashboard effect, the horizontal gap between the videos can be changed, the amount of reflection can be changed, and the gap between the video and the reflection can be changed. The next effect is flap, supporting two video sources, the angle and size between them can be adjusted, along with the amount of zoom and cropping applied to the inset video. When using a PowerPoint or a Keynote as a video source, you can change the aspect ratio of the video frame to match the aspect ratio of the presentation. Next is slots, which supports up to four video sources. Here the duration of the transition can be changed, along with the border colour and thickness between each video source. There's also an option to centre each video source within its frame. 
The final multi-view effect supporting two video sources is picture in picture. Just like with slots, the duration, border colour and border thickness can all be changed. Next, the rounding radius option adjusts how square or circular the video is. The position and the size of the smaller video source can be changed, and this can also be adjusted by dragging in the preview pane. Next we have rotation about the y-axis, rotation about the x-axis, and rotation about the z-axis. And finally, is an option to horizontally crop the video. We hope you can make good use of all of these features and create some great content. In the next tutorial, we'll look at audio to further improve your production. Thanks for watching.